Hi everyone, I'm Jeff and I want to thank you all for joining us here at Oak Ridge Student Ministries. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Today we're celebrating one of my favorite holidays, and that is Easter. And this year we're celebrating how Easter reminds us that certain things in our lives are always true, no matter what. And I want to tell you a, a quick story about a time when I felt really, really important. And I promise this is relevant and will play a part in our lesson. But when I was in grade eight, I tried out and made it onto a school team for the first time. And I made it onto our school's volleyball team. And I had never played volleyball before. I'd played it in like the, you learn the basics in gym class, but I'd never played on a team. And we'd had a couple practices and I was playing on our very first game. And in the, the game, somebody went on the other team up for a spike. And I got up, I was front row, I got up in front of the net and I blocked the ball. And I will tell you that that moment that I blocked the first spike coming over the, the net was one where I felt like a million bucks. I felt important. There was people there cheering and excited. And I felt important and seen by others. Have you guys ever been there? Like people around you knew that you were important? Like you were on top of the world? Like you were seen and noticed and valued by the people around you? If you've had an experience like that, then you know just how good it feels to be seen as important to someone else. But if we're honest, I think that we would also say that there are places and times in our lives when we don't feel that important. And that feeling, well, it kind of sucks. I think the reality is that most of us probably feel unknown or unimportant at some point in our lives. We wonder if we're ever really noticed or seen by other people at school or at home, or maybe even here at church. It seems like only certain people get to feel important all the time. We're just lucky if we feel important every once in a while. If you've ever felt that way, first, I want to say that I'm glad you're here. My hope is that when you walk into this room, when we get to walk into this room again, you're treated with dignity and respect, no matter what. My hope is that when we meet online, when we see each other in person, we would all see each other as people who are important and worthy of love. And second, I want to tell you a story about someone else who probably felt just like we do sometimes. Somebody who didn't think they were all that important. And as we look at this story, we'll see that Easter actually shows us all one really big truth. And that is that we're important to the one who is the most important. Throughout this series, we're going to be talking about three different people who are impacted by Jesus and played a part in the Easter story. Today, we're actually going to talk about the most important event in the Christian faith. And to start, we're going to see what this incredible woman named Mary had to do with it. Now, when you hear the name Mary and you're thinking about the Bible, you may immediately, like most of the world, think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Or maybe you've heard the story of a guy named Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. Well, while both of these are pretty important women in the Bible, they're not the Mary we're talking about today. This Mary may not be the most well-known Mary, but what we know about her and what we're going to learn about her today is that her life is powerful. This Mary was from, from a small fishing village called Magdala. So she was known as Mary Magdalene. Now, here's the thing. It's actually a pretty big deal that we can talk about any of these Marys today. Because at the time that they lived and that Jesus lived, women didn't have a lot of rights or freedoms or opportunities like men in their culture did. That's actually one reason there are a lot more men talked about in the Bible than there are women. 
And that's also part of what made Jesus so interesting. In a culture that gave women less rights, less leadership, and less opportunities, Jesus went out of his way to value women and to give them opportunities. In fact, we know that during his life and ministry, he was closer to Mary Magdalene. He knew her by name. He saw her as important. We know this because some of Jesus' closest followers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, recorded it for us in the Bible. And because Jesus was close to Mary Magdalene, she's included in the story we read every year at Easter. She's a part of the event that shaped our Christian faith. So we're going to take a look at John chapter 20, verses 11 to 13. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. So, to catch us up, Jesus had just been killed. He was crucified on a cross, which was a horrible and public death that friends like Mary Magdalene witnessed. Then, he was buried in a tomb. And because she cared so much about him, Mary went and visited Jesus' grave. But what did she find? She found that it was empty. Could someone have moved or taken his body? Thinking that this had happened, she began to weep even more. Then we learn that Mary was visited by two angels who wanted to know why she was so sad. I mean, wouldn't you think that's pretty rational? That makes sense. You're at a graveside. You're sad. But then something happened that took Mary totally by surprise. Something that changed things for all of us who believe in Jesus. Let's continue to read in John chapter 20, verses 14 to 16. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabini, which is Hebrew for teacher. So there Mary was, weeping over the death of her friend and her teacher. When, just like that, another person appeared. Now, of course, thinking Jesus was dead, she didn't at first recognized that it was him. After all, she saw him die. But then Jesus used Mary's name. He wanted her to know that it was him, that he knew her, that he saw her. And when he spoke her name, she recognized him immediately. And of course, she was in shock. See, Jesus had just risen from the dead. That's what we celebrate at Easter as the resurrection. Now, to resurrect something means to bring it back to life. So at Easter, we remember when Jesus died on the cross and was buried in a tomb. And then we celebrate the fact that he walked out of the tomb three days later. In other words, he came back to life, which is what we call the resurrection. See, Jesus' resurrection is so important. Because of it, we can trust that God is who he says he is. Jesus spent years in his ministry telling his followers that this very thing would happen, that his death and resurrection were coming, and that these events would change everything. But then, it actually happened. And because of that, we can believe that all the things Jesus promised us are true, too. We can walk confidently, knowing that we can be close to God. Jesus made that possible for us for eternity through the resurrection. That's what makes Easter so important. 
And one of the reasons we know this important thing happened is because Mary was there to see him. She witnessed it with her own eyes, and she followed through on a very important task that Jesus gave her. Let's keep reading in John 20, verses 17 and 18. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Mary was the first person to witness the resurrection. She was the person he asked, the first person he asked, to share the news with his closest followers. And I love how this passage ends. She gave them his message. I mean, talk about an important job. Because Mary believed, she knew what Jesus' resurrection meant. And she said yes to sharing his message with the rest of his followers. She is one of the reasons we have record of those moments still today. And that makes her an important piece of the most important event in our whole faith, Jesus' resurrection. Maybe you felt unimportant. Maybe you feel like nobody else sees or notices you. That people don't understand you. That God would never choose or love you. Well, let me just assure you that what we celebrate every year at Easter proves that you are not only important, but you're important to God. He sent His Son Jesus to die for you, to come back to life so that you can be close to Him forever. And He did that because of His love for you. He did that because your life is important to Him. Here's what I want you to remember. Easter reminds us we are important no matter what. God chose somebody like Mary Magdalene to help spread the word about His resurrection. He chose her to be an important part of the story. And what's cool is that the same can be true for us. God didn't just send Jesus to die for those people back then. His resurrection wasn't just to help them. He didn't just want people like Mary to know that he saw and cared for them. He did it for us too. No matter how other people see us, and no matter how we feel, the resurrection proves that we are loved, seen, chosen, and that we have value to God. Easter reminds us that we're important no matter what. The question is, how do we begin to believe that? First, I think we need to learn to think about how we see ourselves. Do you believe that you're important? Do you believe you're important to God or to those around you? or maybe even to yourself. Do you think God even cares about you at all? Get really honest with yourself and think about the way you feel about you. Ask God to remind you this Easter that He loves you. We need to think about how we see ourselves. And next, I want you to think about how you treat others. One of the most important things we can do this Easter is show Jesus' love to others. And we can start by treating others with the same value and respect that Jesus does. Doing that not only shows them that we care, but it gives them a, a glimpse of God's love working through us. It shows them that they're important. So remember, Easter reminds us that we're important, no matter what. So as we wrap up today, I want you to think about how you'd answer this question. What makes the resurrection important to you? Let's pray. God, thank you for valuing us, for loving us, and for showing us that you care for each one of us. We pray that you would be with us this Easter. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.